Okay, welcome everybody and uh, thank you so much to um, Adam Day, uh, UK boss of EXP. Um, so welcome to um, this afternoon's uh, chat, Adam. So if you wouldn't mind, tell us um, who you are. I'm sure everybody knows anyway, but tell us who you are what you're, and what you do for the moment. That'd be great. No problem. Yeah, thanks for having me, Nat. Good to speak to you again, as always. Um, yeah, so my name's Adam Day. I'm, uh, I head up the EXP operation in the UK. I've been doing a state agency since 1997 as a trainee negotiator. Um, and then started up a company called Hatched, um, which was eventually acquired by what was one of the first online estate agents, eventually acquired yeah. by the Tunnels Group. Um, yeah. By myself here. Brilliant. Okay. So, yeah, you said it's one of the first. I think you you were exactly one of the first, second um, that, that came along for as an online agent quite a long time before online agents were actually a thing or as they are now. So, that was quite forward thinking of you there. Yeah. I mean, I think um, I, I was. So we were the second house network. House network were the first. So Graham Lock always reminds me that they were the first. Um, <laughs> I'm sure Graham does. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, so yeah. And I think I think I grew up. You know, I started in the states in '97, and I was on the cusp of there was no internet, and then there's the internet. Um, you know, no right move, then there's right move, and and I kind of felt that the the, the playing field was being leveled by having the likes of right move and having what you know one one portal. Yeah. Yeah. Portals were really and. So I tried to, th I felt that there was some changes could be done with the state agency. Um, and probably wrongly in hindsight, I thought it was about being cheap. Um, and, but that's what we, that was the route we went down. We were, we were trying to scale, and we'd scale a cheap fee business, cheap fee, I want to call it. It was a good service, high end. You know, we were good. We did a lot of automation, lots of communication, vendor login areas. You know, that was what the whole thing was about, was making it easier for vendors to communicate and buyers to communicate with the operation. Yeah. Um, inside hours, outside of hours and all that sort of stuff. But we went about it from a cheap point of view. And that was probably the mistake that we made. Having said that, you know, 2015, we we, we sold the business to the Connells Group and um, they they were and still are the biggest property services group in the UK. So it was a big moment for us and, you know, kind of um, yeah, kind of life changing in a way, I suppose. Um, and uh, yeah, that was that was six years ago now. Yeah, wow, time fly. My God, makes me feel even older. So, uh, yeah. So after um, you exited, we we are where we are now today in the marketplace with um, uh, the online online offering. How do you see that planning out now? Because there's been quite a lot of critics of that, and uh, in terms of market share um, and what's happened. What's your what's your take on where we are now in the with the online marketplace? I still, I still don't quite know what the online marketplace means. You know, you know, EXP, for example, we're all home based. So are we online? Well, but then online has connotations of being cheap and EXP yeah. agents, we're not cheap. We're, we're, we're good, high quality, high fees, you know, high commission service. Uh, it's up to the agent what they charge, but the agent generally charges that offices in that case then. Yeah. 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 We don't set the fees. We don't set low fees or anything like that. So, so I guess I, I, I say this to a lot of people, I think, Purple bricks had to exist for this type of model, this evolution of of that model to exist. Um, and uh, funny, one of my one of my uh, one of my guys, um, I won't say his name, but he was at a conference and he said it's not it's not purple. This was a few years ago now. And I think it was uh, someone was speaking and said it's not purple bricks you got to be worried about. It's purple bricks' his son or grandson you have got to be worried about. Um, and okay. uh, and I kind of think purple bricks had to exist because they changed the mindset of the UK agent from being employed. So going self-employed, but it was too big a jump to take that massive leap of going fully self-employed. So Purple Bricks was a perfect answer to, to bridge that gap, I think, because although they said they were self-employed, they really weren't self-employed. They were targeted. There was lots of, you know, there's territories, there was stuff like that 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 um, means you weren't really self-employed. So, but they had to exist for EXP to have any sort of success, I think. Okay, so talk, actually talking about the self-employed model, there's been quite a lot in the press recently, um, particularly following the Uber case. Um, how do you see that panning out for um, our self-employed agents in the UK? Do you think that, that will have any effect? Uh, as long as the self-employed models take the right advice, then no, it won't. I mean, you know, we we don't dictate territories, we don't dictate the commission. Um, you know, the um, the agent has to pay us before we pay them. That's another big part of the R35 HMRC's regulations. There's various other bits and pieces. You know, the territories thing is a big one. Um, you know, you can't dictate someone where they work. That, that otherwise, it's not a clear business-to-business -business relationship. Right. Um, 
And so that was one of the reasons I'm sure, I mean, I don't know, and that, that's one of the reasons that these other models are having to change because they do dictate territories. So I think as long as those models look, you know, get the right advice and then they will, they will be on the right side of it. And we're very clearly, you know, we are the estate agency business. We hold the contract, we bank the revenue, but the agent is, you know, a business to business relationship with EXP. Okay. Okay. So talking about ESP there, EXP, you, you I remember when he went to the States um, going back a few years now, um, what you obviously learned quite a bit from how they do things over there. Have What have you learned from their model and what have you brought over here and can it all work over here in the same way? Yeah, good question. Uh, it can't all work in the same way. You know, the, 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 in, in, the, in the States and in many other countries, there's licensing. Licensing is basically a, a qualification. And so they recruit anybody. So they recruit, you know, taxi drivers, fitness instructors, accountants, lawyers, yeah, yeah. as long as they've got a license, which means they've been qualified. Yeah. What you can't do over here is then we, we don't we can't enforce licensing on people because it's not an enforceable thing. So um, for me, it was really important when you see these sorts of models, you know, I'm go take back a little bit, not too far, but um, you know, when when I started, I'm a bit of an estate agency geek. I look at the models, I understand them, yeah. and uh, and you know, when I looked at the, I, I guess other other models coming in saying we're going to pay you 65 percent or 60 percent or 70 percent, what the numbers were, four, five, six, seven years ago, as an agent, you're thinking, wow, that's pretty cool. I'll have some yeah. of that. Yeah, yeah. I'm an early mass market person when I buy things, so. You know, my mate Alan and, and 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 Anthony, they buy the flat screen TV the day it came out, and I wait for them. I wait for a year or two before they, you know, tell me what it's like, and then I buy one. Yeah. So I'm kind of like that when it comes to adoption of. of so an early adopter on the bell curve, an early adopter. Yeah. Exactly. I think from a business point of view, I'm an innovator, and I'll start. I'll put jump in early on doing businesses, but yeah. from a purchasing point of view, I, I wait to see how others react. Um, and so you had to have success and we've got you know over 250 agents now in the space of two years um and the you know there's there's dozens and dozens and dozens that are earning way way more than they would ever earn in the high street we've got some guys that will learn you know of course i'm going to talk about the big hitters but 400,000 over the next 12 months 500,000 over the next 12 months we think but then even you know that and that's well over half are earning significantly more i would say um and so you have so my point being is when i went to america they said right you know there's no licensing in the uk what a great opportunity let's just go and bring get agents on board and i yeah. said whoa, whoa, whoa you need to we have to have some sort of you know um, um qualification in terms of experience so we only allow agents with two years experience to join because we felt that those early adopters of the model you know the likes of ben moore and, and various others joe rylett and you know all these people that have joined right at the early stages they had to be successful to convince someone like me, the late mass market or the early mass market to then join. And so that's now like, you know, we've got other agents that are joining that have seen the model explode for others. And yeah. It's been more social proof kind of thing. And so I think you can translate a lot of it. You can translate the commercials, you know, agents getting 70%. People say that can't be done here because the fees are too low. Well, it can. Um, you know, we're operating uh, as a business. We're, we're fine. You know, we've been going two years now. Um, but you can't translate everything basically but you can translate a lot and uh the collaboration is the thing that they do best over there um okay in america really it's just that, that whole working together to achieve yeah. the right result for the buyer and the seller because they've got both sides of the transaction um and that, that they do that really really well out there okay so looking at how they do it and now how we do it and you guys are doing it at uh, exp where do you see say for example the next three years looking looking at i won't say five because it's just too long in this marketplace but say for the in the next three years where do you see both exp being and of course the online model or the work from home model uh so uh, i've i've had egg on my face before making predictions so you won't get a prediction out of me but um <laughs> Yeah, we look, we're continuing to grow rapidly. Um, and I think the model is continuing to grow because again, that social proof. Social proof is so important to give people the confidence to jump in. They need to see, you know, Joe Ryler earning three times more than he's ever earned in his life before. That they need to see yeah. that in order to jump in. So, you know, we'll continue in the same, pretty much in the same vein. We might make a few little twists and turns to the model, possibly, to to make it even more, you know, attractive. Um but yeah, we're we're. I, th I think the model will grow. I think there's a there's room for everything, you know, as in 
all walks of life in America they have an employed model there's a couple of businesses that do employed not many it's a tiny like tiny percentage oh, interesting that's completely the opposite to here really yeah uh, yeah exactly it is and and so there's 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 a space for all the models um but I do think you know I, th I do think we have to look at outwardly and not be that little Britain and realize that actually we're one of the only countries that employ agents you know when you look yeah. at uh, we've got 18 countries now with the XP and I, I'm in meetings with agents from Colombia and Brazil and France and Spain and India and Australia and they all self they can't believe we're all employed I mean they not a single country that we've taken on apart from the UK has an employed model so maybe we're the ones doing something wrong and maybe the rest of the world have got it right who knows yeah, who knows yeah it could be the case but um okay look so thank you for that Adam that's been brilliant um well, I wanted to just finish off with one last thing. I'm going to spring it on you if that's all right. Tell us something that we don't know about Adam Day. Something you no, don't know. You have sprung this on, on one on me as well. Thank you. Um, Not champion ice skater or I, something. I don't know. I'm a pretty open book. I think everybody at EXP will tell you I'm a pretty open book. But I have um, got a bit quieter over the last four or five years. I don't... I don't <laughs> this is you I, don't, uh, I don't seek the limelight you look at seven eight years ago I, I used to seek the limelight you know I'd be tapping you up for you know come on Nat do a piece do a piece do a piece and and stuff like that and and often you'd say no you know do one but um but I'm like, le much less like that now I don't I don't seek the attention I think I learned that from Connell's you know Connell's are a brilliant business and they just go about their business yeah. and they just they just prove it with their numbers um that they re reveal every year and you just go wow and they, they don't ever shout about it they don't have any shouty people in the business yeah. um i guess i probably learned that from them and thought actually you can you can grow a business you know we've grown a low fee uh, you know scout a low fee business now a high fee business and I, we've done them very very differently the first one was very shouty and this one's a little bit a little bit quieter a bit more stealth um so i think i've probably got a bit quieter and a bit more reserved in my old age now I like it. OK, all right. Good answer. All right. That's great. Thank you, Adam Day, UK boss of EXP. Thanks for joining us and uh, we'll hope to speak to you soon to get the next chapter. Good stuff. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, Adam. Appreciate it. See you.